one of the keys in this idea of connection is as you walk away from this session, when you think about how are you going to get people engaged and excited, it's going to be less about kind of what you're saying, how excited you're getting. That's going to be important. But where you need to connect is what does it mean for them? Great, we're, we're having this big product launch. I'm really excited that Bill's excited about it. But what do people really think about? What does it mean to me? So you have to think about all the people on your team. How can you make this meaningful to them? Roger talked about being meaning makers. Even if they're not involved directly in the project, how can you make this exciting for them? Make them feel relevant, important. That's what, I mean, when you guys were talking a little earlier about your exceptional leaders, your exceptional leaders made you feel like you were relevant, important, you mattered, this, you meant something. That's what an exceptional leader does when they connect. So if you're going to be successful at motivating and inspiring the rest of this organization, it's going to have a lot to do with intelligently managing emotions, both your own and all the people that you work with. Now, how many here, put your hand up if you've heard of the concept of emotional intelligence, or EQ. Okay, keep your hand up if you have any. <laughs> well, 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 we'll figure that one out a little bit later. What we are going to talk about is leveraging this concept of emotional intelligence in order to cultivate and create that power to win culture. Now, how many of you are sitting there thinking, oh boy, emotional intelligence, this is going to be some kind of kumbaya, uh, soft and squishy type session, right? Um, well, what uh, Wes didn't mention in my introduction is that I have degrees in mathematics and computer science. I'm not that guy. Notice there's no Kleenex boxes on your tables, okay? What I'm interested in, uh, I'm an analytical by nature. I'm, I'm a former PL1 and COBOL programmer, and I know some of you know what that's all about. I want to know the research and the science behind something before I'm really going to engage it and apply it. So the approach we're going to take to this concept of managing emotions, which is so important for you, is going to be a more analytical and scientific approach. It's how much working memory you have. It will reduce your ability to think a complex thought. Have you ever heard yourself say, I was so angry I couldn't think straight? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had that difficult conversation with a partner or spouse and 20 minutes later thought of all the good comebacks? <laughs> right? Because in that moment, you were triggered and you couldn't think a complex thought. Or in a business setting, you're presenting an idea on how you'd like the change to work, and someone's really, a senior person is maybe sort of really criticizing your idea, and, and you can't articulate a good response, and after the meeting you think, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. You know, you, you get that email that kind of frustrates you, and you go, type, 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 reply to all. <laughs> right? And it's like, recall, recall. <laughs> recall doesn't work. I don't know why there's a recall. There's no recall. It doesn't work. So. When you see someone becoming more commanding in tone, becoming more directive, um, for me, one of my defaults, if I'm in a meeting and it's not going the way I want it to and I'm feeling a little overwhelmed and I have a lot to do and somebody's you know, taking a long time to explain something, you know that person that you ask them what time it is and they tell you how to build a watch? <laughs> right? my, my default behavior is to interrupt them. Well, now, which does that get me on their poor leader list or their exceptional leader list when I interrupt them? gets me on their poor leader list. Again, an emotion is driving a behavior and it's having an impact. I'm not aware of it. I can't manage it. Bill Benjamin has a unique background. He has advanced degrees in mathematics and computer science, which makes him a hit with more analytical audiences. And he has over 20 years of business and sales experience. As a leader in the technology industry, he grew his company from $2 million in sales to over $75 million. Bill shares the mistakes he made in his career as a leader and explains how he learned to leverage the science of emotions to drive great performance and leadership in his organizations. Why is this hard? Why is it that sometimes smart people fail? Why don't, I mean, you probably all have met people either here at NASA or you've met people that you went to college with who were just super bright. I know a few. And you thought, you know, they're going to be the next, you know, leader of, of, of the command control center or whatever it is, and they don't do that well. An inability to manage change. Now, I know you don't have much change going on here at NASA, do you? <laughs> no, you've got an incredible amount of change. I, by the way, I, in terms of the impact of change, I love the story of the astronauts who don't like the badge situation. I mean, these are individuals who can handle an incredible amount of pressure, who have been some of the most, through some of the most challenging, you know, uncertain you know, times in their lives, yet a new badge system throws them off. You see how change affects us?
Isn't it just amazing? The question is, how will you respond to this challenge? Are you going to get frustrated, get negative, kind of give up? Or are you going to step up and play a big game? How will you manage those emotions to get performance? And there's no better place to see the impact of emotions on performance than in sports. So for those of you, the golf tournament yesterday, I mean, you know, you see one of those guys hit a bad shot and all the pros do. You know, are they walking up to the next one, beating themselves up about that bad shot, right, frustrated? And if they are, how, how good are they going to be at hitting the next shot? It's going to be tough. You all know that. Now, my company, IHHP, in addition to working with sales teams like yourselves, we work with executives of Fortune 500 companies, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Army. We also work with elite and Olympic athletes. And we've been to the last four Olympic Games. Here's what's interesting. During the two-week period of the Olympic Games, there are more world records set than in the previous four years. Makes sense, right? The competition goes up, the pressure goes up, you get best performance. Here's what's really interesting. During that same two-week period, there are more personal worst set than in the previous four years. Interesting, isn't it? Some athletes, all of whom have trained for a specific behavior all their lives, face that tension, that pressure, and they fall apart. Some of them fall apart. It gets them. Others excel. This is your opportunity to take this challenging situation and make that choice to manage that emotion to get great performance. The difference maker for Bill's career was, and continues to be, his work in the one critical competency of leadership, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize and manage ours and others' emotions and leverage the science of those emotions to motivate yourself and the people you lead. I'm pretty confident that you're all going to walk out of here and the next month is going to be very exciting. You're going to take this energy and it's going to be a really exciting product launch. Where I think your real challenge is, it's in the two months after that, and the six months after that, and the 12 months after that. When the product doesn't work perfectly, and a channel person calls in complaining, and the service person didn't respond because the salesperson didn't follow the proper procedure, and the product person can't fix it because there's no budget. And that's the stuff when it gets hard, when it gets challenging, when some of that legacy stuff starts unearthing itself. That's where your real challenge is going to be. And that's where managing emotions is going to be critical. Most people, when they go to influence, engage, coach, they lead from their side of the bridge. They lead from their passion, their knowledge, their enthusiasm, their authority. And if you're pretty passionate and pretty knowledgeable and pretty smart, you can get a lot of people to jump. I mean, you know, as a leader, I, I did get some people to jump. But at some point, there's something going on for that other person that can cause them not to jump. And you can see they're not going to. Great leaders, people who really influence change, they can lead from the other side of the bridge. And it's exactly what um, Dr. Chell talked about, and I don't know whether he shared it with you. I hope you don't mind me sharing it. But he said as he's gone through this process, he had an aha about what this whole transformation is really all about. It's about empathy. It's about understanding what is going on for those other people. In that, in that you know, transplant center, that donor center, or who, you know, whatever part of this network you're part of, can you connect and understand what's going on for other people and walk them back? Because when people feel heard, when they have a voice, when they feel valued and understood, then they engage. Then they're less likely to resist. Bill Benjamin is the CEO of the Institute for Health and Human Potential, one of Profit 100 Magazine's fastest growing companies. IHHP is a research and learning organization that studies what drives great performance and leadership. This year alone, IHHP will deliver their work on four continents with business leaders and salespeople from organizations as diverse as the U.S. Army, the Federal Reserve Bank, Intel, the Orlando Magic of the NBA, and Olympic athletes. Bill will educate your leaders and help your people increase performance by providing them with techniques they can use to coach and inspire others. There's really two things there in terms of emotional management, isn't there? There's my own ability to allow the people on my team and my peers and even my boss to come at me with things that may come across as unskillful, they may feel like a put down or a let down, but allow that emotion to exist and not jump and react like I used to when I felt criticized. The other side of it is can I as a leader speak my truth. Can I step in when it's hard? I know one of the biggest problems I had when I was first a leader was dealing with employee performance issues, right? 
I'd, there'd be an issue, there'd be someone to have to address, I'd tell them I'm going to go into that meeting and really hold their feet to the fire, I'm going to be skillful and tough but fair, and I'd come out of the meeting and I'd think, I'm not sure I really got across, you know, that there was really an issue there. I kind of let up part way through. Now why do you think I might have done that? Why don't people speak their truth? Fear, specifically in my case, of not being liked. I want everyone to like me. I want my employees to like me. But if I go in and I deliver this bad news or this difficult news or hold them accountable to something, they may not like me in that moment. So this is where the whole self-awareness comes in. First of all, I have to be aware that I'm afraid of a reaction or I'm worried about what other people will think or I'm not wanting to be disliked. Then I can manage it. Then I can say, you know what? When I go into the meeting, I'm going to be aware that I'm going to have that reaction, but I'm still going to step in because I know that if I allow a performance issue to go on without addressing it, it doesn't serve me or the other person. But I've got to manage my emotions first. Bill customizes his presentations for each client and uses personal examples that draw from his background in mathematics as well as his career as a leader, providing him with a unique insight into performance and the science of leadership that deeply resonates with audiences around the world. I thought he was great. You know, he did a, he did a wonderful job of, uh, of uh, communicating the information. He uh, was funny, you know, he, he brought in uh, a lot of personal anecdotes that uh, showed us that, that he has the same struggles that we have. And, um, you know, there was sort of an empathy that, that uh, I think uh, flowed from him into the audience. And I think that really helps people, you know, as opposed to the expert saying, I've done this and everybody kind of thinking, well, gee, you know, I don't know if I can do that. I think a lot of people left here confident that, that they can change their lives too. Bill consistently receives the highest feedback wherever he presents. What made Bill's session exceptional was the way he connected emotional intelligence to the warrior mentality of the Air National Guard. Our work is war and combat, dealing with natural disasters and homeland security. We learn techniques to improve our ability to deal with tense and stressful conditions. In a couple of challenging situations after the session, my squadron immediately put the techniques to use. Major John Hutter, Air National Guard. Your sessions were thought-provoking and a real highlight of my week. I always appreciate seeing someone of great talent in action. Your content, your delivery, your energy. It was a great boost to the conference. Your sessions were a home run. Maria Slowinski, General Reinsurance Corporation. Bill has inspired international audiences with the following presentations. Leadership 2.0, the science of great leadership. High performance sales, what makes a successful salesperson? The three conversations of leadership, how leaders drive results by having the conversations that matter. We've been conditioned to think that that's what a leader does. A leader solves problems. I thought the same thing. What I came to realize is, is that my job is actually to help others solve problems. Because you both, you all know what happens when they come up with the idea. They're more committed to it. It's their idea. Then, by the way, they've started to learn how to solve problems, and they don't keep coming to you. Then you have more time. Remember, this is all about saving time, not taking more time. If you just take a moment to say, and this is the question, this is it, it's a really hard one to ask, what do you think we should do? Simple, hard. <laughs> Simple and hard. What do you think we should do? It's so, I mean, it just happened to me the other day. I've been practicing this stuff for 10 years. And just the other day, I'm sitting at lunch with someone, and, and she's um, a ploy, and she's having a challenge or something. I'm like, okay, we should, what do you think we should do? Like, I'm literally like, it's just, it's right there. Like, I, I, I got to go there, because I got to solve it. I want to help. I, I want to feel good. I, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Bill Benjamin leaves audiences with two things inspiration to improve their own performance and leadership skills, and strategies they can apply to get it done, both at work and at home. Bill is consistently asked for return engagements by the companies and associations he presents to. To ensure the success of your next event, call the bureau who sent you this video to secure a date in Bill's calendar.